And uh, let's see, let's go through the, the minimal viable product also. So now we are, have looked at all the different elements and I have intentionally here not dive into the product uh, too fast because it's important to understand the customer perspective because we as entrepreneurs or when we're building a company and specifically a lot of companies that you see everything is about the product everyone's around the product but at the same time they don't have all the different things how customers come across with the product and uh, that's why because those are going to be needed anyway uh, and having any version of those available will also help to communicate and learn things that oh actually now when i was doing this instruction i realized that in our product we're missing a, a whole thing uh, but so let's put that there now but when only looking at that interface and you already know the process behind it and you, you have so much things that you imagine that all, all the other people will also see that you are missing because not needing to work or not uh, caring to work on these other parts aspects at the same time so from MVP, the point of the MVP concept is, is basically to, to, to be able to create a minimum product to validate. And we have covered some of those, what it, it can be. Um, but before you start to build, I want to remind of, make sure that you are starting to work with MVP with the highest priority idea problem fit that you have met matched uh, with the previous exercises on formation level or you to start with the top two or top three or you go them one by one in the order when you start to test with the product the key here is that you want to optimize the efficiency that you focus on the the the, the mvp that anyway takes more time to create and just uh, doing research because the research you need also for other means, markets, potential, uh, for pitches and so forth. So define market uh, you have on your vision and uh, uh, and, and uh, basic basic uh, organizational bigger picture and the DNA canvas. So your product market fit validation versus new market validation in general, aka market timing. So basically this means that you are not only trying to test uh, what is the validation in an existing market but what would be for your product if it's delivered now. So I, I would say a good, good example is like if you would now bring to the market a new uh, online project management tool, like there's so many of those out there, or a new uh, newsletter tool. Again, a lot of things out there, or a new webinar tool. And it's very interesting because there are, there are opportunities in all of this, but like it's really hard to see what would be what would look like a better project management tool because there's so many out of there. But who knows, someone can figure out a model, but when you see it, you can say, oh, this is exactly what, what I'm looking for. There's this air table now in Silicon Valley that is, is a big hoopla, but I would say the big innovation in that is actually that they have created a similar community around the tool than what GitHub has around developers or LinkedIn has around business people or or Behance has between designers. So they're actually looking to capture the whole product manager people uh, in context of the tool and making them share. So that's the bigger innovation there. It's not just the product management tool, a project management tool. So if we look at uh, then towards the scaling. So at this validation phase, again, we don't have to worry too much about the scaling. That's the, the point is to really uh, think about the scaling and think about that commitment of scaling and 
uh, and considerations. Is there something that we need to look at now when we're doing these things initially, the first MVPs and versions, where we need to take into account the future scaling somehow, but limit that thinking that don't overestimate, don't overexpect, don't overbuild, because many of the things can be rebuilt and will be rebuilt anyway uh, in the next phases, but there may be something more, uh, for example, a design, a brand image, there may be something that can last time very easily with the same investment, usually it costs same money to create bad design than a good design, uh, if you find the right, uh, right designer for that. Uh, but take it into account and can take it into consideration, but don't worry too much. And uh, really go into testing assumptions with as simple models as possible. So the simpler it can be, the faster it can be put out and tested. Uh, so cheap, quick, manual, but try to imitate or remain as true to the, to the true experience when testing as possible. So for example, if it's an online product and you want to test with the live person uh, to get their responses and reactions and how they navigate the user interface and you can observe and you can record that, their behavior, and you can hear them, you can ask like, can you just speak out what you're doing and what you're thinking when you're doing that? But don't tell them, don't be there guiding them. You can click here, go here and do that, do that, because that's not the reality how would they experience that product. But you can be there recording, observing, but don't tell them what to do or how the product works. That's not the, that's not the goal. Then you are missing the point of testing the scalable approach. So never, the finally never start scale before you have tested and know it really works. So that's, again, that's the premature scaling, making assumptions that are not tested, not validated, making assumptions that we will just make it work, it will work, so let's just start driving audience uh, uh, or doing investments into, well, nowadays you don't have to make much of investments into softwares on hardwares and so forth, but in the old world it would have meant that. So here's a great uh, snapshot of, of thinking of the minimum viable product. So the wrong way is to think that it's a piece of existing product that by itself is not useful or valuable, but the right way is that it, it's a complete product that is completely useful, but it, it's just a different type of product for the same use that you will eventually uh, create a new version or a new version and a new version, but every version is complete on its own right, at least for one feature or one function or one aspect of how you capture the, the, the value. So this is, this is really the essence. So how do you create a skateboard uh, as a first, first kind of approach? So how do you, how can you create an um, um, uh, experience of an skateboard in a, in a beginning? So these are uh, snapshots from a, a advertising campaign of a, a while ago, and I think this captured very well how you could pretend the MVP. Uh, so what happens behind the scenes is irrelevant. So basically the customer is having a full experience, but, but the, the, there's nothing behind the machine than uh, manual effort. And someone could be there just observing this and, and seeing what the traffic is and, and so forth. Here's another one. Uh, I think this were very great uh, advertising campaign. Uh, so again, just pretending uh, to deliver the product, but the customer never sees what's behind the scene and they get the experience uh, as, as they would expect it to be. One more, this is just so, so descriptive in, in that sense that how can you, how can you, uh, play with the idea and then what does this mean in the context of of your future product or your current product in the process and then that's up to you 
So one example I want to give here uh, is, is that there was a, um, a team who was testing a, a car, car computer or a car assistant uh, and voice activated assistant and they made a setup that how would people use that in a car and basically it means that there was just a person on the back seat in, in a van with the, with the wall in between acting as a computer. Basically, they had the voice, uh, act, the changing voice so that it sounded like a computer voice, but it was just a human. And they had a script on the other end, like the types of user interface that the customer could have. And then the customer could ask anything, and they just wanted to know what are the first questions and what are the most typical questions or requests that this uh, assistant would have to be able to deliver so that the first product that they would create would actually deliver on those questions first. And then it doesn't have to worry about the, the less common uh, questions later on. But that didn't require anything but the, again, to the setup and not that the real product. The key is to capture the experience and the feedback. And whatever the minimum viable product is, that's what it is. And then once you kind of get this uh, concept and notion, then don't limit this thinking only for the actual physical product. Apply it to the, whether it's instructions, whether it's uh, the website, whether it's the, the, the marketing content, whether it's the brochure, like everything has the same thing that, that just put quickly something out. Don't work inside your own building only with your own team you are not the customer you may be also the customer that's a good thing but most likely you are not at least you are not all of the different customers so really get feedback from the real customers and uh, i've been very surprised oftentimes how difficult it is to to for people to actually go and do it uh, compared to the real value it has and the, the, the versus the part that what doesn't have the value and how much people do that. It's always easier to iterate than to create, so always create crappy versions first to get started. Uh, there's a certain level of how much things are post before creating anything, but once something exists, it's so much easier to, to iterate and get feedback and start making it better. So the quicker you create the first person of instructions, first person of website, the first person of brochure, first person of everything, the sooner you start to see the whole thing and quicker it is to, to look at these different things. Because now you're working with small things. You may have many things to work on, but you're working with the small thing where you can iterate very quickly. If this would be a bigger organization, then there's a whole process and divide it, you know, departments of marketing department and so forth. That's why they are so slow to learn. Because they can't have a lot of knowledge and a lot of learning iterated very quickly, very quickly in a small setting. 